What's cracking? This is Darren McDuffie, aka the Fat Man, assisting you in becoming perfectly healthy and toned. So today, I want to discuss with you a principle that I developed uh, years ago to help me kind of deal with some things that I was going through. And but before I do that, let's just go back in reverse for a little bit. So. For those of you who don't know my background, I played basketball in high school and I was also a collegiate basketball player. So just to kind of put things in context, when I graduated from high school, I was a 6'5 guy, I weighed 165 pounds. I was always underweight when I was um, younger. So uh, when I got to college, I was still underweight. I graduated from college and I was 6'7, I weighed 177 pounds, pretty slim, huh? So, one of the things I remember as being an underweight guy is I always wanted to be to gain weight. And I remember I used to take weight gain shakes, I used to eat a whole lot of food, and I could never put on any weight. And I remember my mother telling me, my mother said, she said, son, once you get older, you'll start to put on some weight. And I just didn't believe that. I wanted the weight at the time. I wanted it because I just got tired as an underweight guy being pushed around under the goal. If anybody out there have ever been play, played basketball, you know you have to have strength so you don't get pushed around under the goal for rebounds and stuff like that. So I never really wanted to wait on the process of me maturing into my weight. Um, so again, I graduated from college, I was still underweight and I survived and everything was good with that. So after I graduated, I remember the scale started to just triple. So. I graduated at 177 pounds. I went up to 185. I went up to 195. I then went up to 200 and got over the 200 pound range. And then it wasn't until I became uh, probably within my uh, early 30s that I gained a significant amount of weight. And the reason why that happened was because at the time I was a pharmaceutical rep and I had to cater lunches from for doctors and nurses and I would go to ER and bring donuts and all of that stuff and one of the things that I found myself doing is anytime there would be any leftover lunches I would take those lunches with me and I would eat those lunches on the way to my next doctor or if there were donuts I would eat donuts on the way to my next doctor or something you know along those lines <clears throat> so as a result of that this once this, this guy who was once an underweight guy became overweight. So imagine me being 6'7", I could never weigh more than 200 and something odd pounds, and then I became almost 245 pounds. And I felt really, really embarrassed. And I was like, okay, well, what, what, am, I, what am I gonna do? I'm an, I used to be an athlete, I can't run anymore, um, I'm overweight. And I felt embarrassed. And I remember one time I was home and we were just playing some pickup basketball. And I ran down the court one time and I was out of breath. And all of my friends were laughing at me. And it was like, D, what, I mean, what, what did you do, man? You, you know, you used to be fit and trim and now you're overweight. And I can remember sitting on the bench at the local, the YMCA where I'm from. And I can just say, you know what? I got to do something about this. So um, I, as a result of that, I, uh, I stayed in the pharmaceutical game for about two years and then I gave up the pharmaceutical game and I moved back down to uh, Florida. And as soon as I moved back down here, I started to get more and more into wanting to get back uh, to, being, to being fit. And the first book that I picked up was a book called Body for Life. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that book, but in that book they give you 45 minute workouts and uh, Bill Phillips you know, takes you through the art of building muscle. And I remember reading that book. I got that book actually from the flea market down here in South Florida. I paid a dollar for the book. And I remember reading that book from cover to cover. And then I remember, you know, going to the gym, getting a membership, and I started to go in and I started to 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 do the to, to lift the weights. Um, so from that, I expanded into the Body for Life cookbook. They had a cookbook where it tells you how to eat. I had never known anything about healthy eating. To me, healthy eating was eating a hamburger and fries or eating a turkey sandwich or something like that. That was healthy eating to me. So that book basically gave me the background in knowing how to eat to be a little bit more healthy. Now, one of the things I 
I wanted to discuss with you today is this principle right here, and I call it the Gutga principle. Printed this out for you. It's called the Gutga principle, or giving up to gain something. What I realize is that when I talk to people, and this makes me mad frustrated, when I talk to people, most of us are not willing to give up anything to gain anything. So for instance, for me, when I was overweight, I had to give up eating certain things. Like for, I used to love honey buns. I don't eat them anymore, but I used to love honey buns. And I would get three honey buns at one time, and I would eat all three honey buns. And those honey buns are about this big. I don't know if you've ever seen those big size honey buns. But I would sit down and literally eat three honey buns and then drink a glass of milk. I can no longer tolerate milk, but at that time I could tolerate milk. Another thing that I would do was I would actually, I don't think Papa John sells their extra large pizzas anymore, but I would order an extra large pizza and I would order that. I would order wings and sometimes I think that they had this little, I forget what you call it, it's some kind of sweet bread, but it has icing on it. And I would order all that on a Friday night and I would sit there and I would eat a whole pizza. I would eat probably literally half of the wings. I think it's 10 wings. So I would eat like five of those and then I would eat maybe uh, a slice of the uh, sweet bread or whatever they call it. And then I would get up the next morning and eat the rest of the wings and eat the sweet bread. So it was no mystery why I was overweight. But one of the things I realized is that I had to give up something in order to gain something. And like I said, most people aren't willing to give up anything. You know, you see this stuff on TV where people say, okay, well, you can eat what you want to eat and lose weight. I'm here to tell you that that's not true. I'm here to tell you that you can't be healthy if you're not willing to give up some things. The things that I had to give up were honey buns. I no longer eat that. I'm gluten uh, sensitive to gluten, so I no longer eat bread, bread products or anything like that. So I had to give up that. I didn't know that at the time that I was gluten sensitive, but I knew that I had to give up eating honey buns. I knew that I had to give up eating Papa John's pizza. I knew that I had to get more sleep, and I knew that I had to quit being inactive. It was imperative that I got into the gym, did some running on the treadmill, lifted the weights, and over a culmination of a, a couple of months, I became more healthy. I became more fit. I started to lose the uh, to lose the weight. So as a result of that, I went from being 245 pounds down to about 220. So I lost 25 of those pounds. Now knowing what I know now, I am at probably about 215, which is a great weight for me. I can tell when I'm creeping up in weight because I start to feel pain in my pain in my joints. And I know that 215, uh, you know, give or take five pounds or more, that that's an ideal weight for me. And I'm happy with that weight. I know that I'm not going to be a big guy. I always look at these weightlifting magazines and I thought that, okay, I wanted to be a bodybuilder. But I'm like, okay, my body frame, I'm 6'7". My body frame is not built like these bodybuilders, they're shorter guys and, they, and their muscle is more compact. So I'm cool with where I am right now. But what I'm saying is I had to realize that I had to give up certain things to gain something. And like I said, I'm very frustrated when I talk to people. Most people aren't willing to give up anything. Like for instance, I can sit down and talk to somebody and they'll ask me and they say, hey, you know, what do I need to do to be healthy? And I said, okay, well, you need to give up certain foods. And immediately, their mind focuses on resistance. They don't want to give up the food. They don't want to do the things that they need to do. And the human mind, our minds are very focused on resistance and struggle. So resistance actually equals struggle. So when you are resistant to something, you create struggle. And most people love to create struggle. They focus on something that they have to uh something that they have to give up instead of focusing on what they have to gain. So to put that, that principle a little bit more in context for you, in high school I took a driver's ed class and I remember my driver's ed teacher, he told us that if you get into, you know, you hide your plane over something and your car starts skidding, he said go in the direction of the skid to get yourself back in control. So with most people, what they want to do is they want to go in the reverse direction. They want to go in the direction 
that they are not skidding in, and that's human nature. We want to control. We think we're going to control things if we go the opposite way. But you got to realize that the human mind focuses on struggles first, and it doesn't focus on solutions. So you have to tell yourself, if I'm wanting to do something, if it's in a relationship, if it's in a uh, in a health in the health context, you have to say, what am I willing to give up in order to gain, and then focus on what you're gaining. Some of us want to stay up at night till one two o'clock in the morning and not get enough sleep, and you end up paying for that the next morning. So if you're saying, okay, well, I want to be able to feel rested when I get up in the morning, focus on gaining that rest. Don't focus on, okay, well, I have to give up. I can't stay up and watch Dexter. I can't stay up and watch True Blood. Uh, I can't stay up to watch any, you know, any of your other favorite shows that you have that you're, you know, that you want to stay up to 11 or 12 o'clock or midnight and you don't want to give those shows up. So focus on what you gain. When you gain, uh, you give up your shows, you're gaining sleep. You feel rested in the morning. When you give up the foods that are, for instance, uh, I did a teleseminar on food sensitivities. And I can guarantee you that the people that were on that teleseminar were focusing on what they had to give up. There are certain foods that you can't eat. For me, it's gluten. I don't eat bread products. I said that before. But I don't eat bread products. I remember for I tried that for a week, and all I could think about for that week was I can't eat pizza anymore. I can't eat cookies, and I love cookies. But I focused on everything that I couldn't eat instead of really putting my focus on gaining something. And I remember after going through this whole process for a week, and I was diagnosed with arthritis in both of my knees. I remember after giving up gluten, my knees felt so much better. And I had cured my arthritis that I said, you know what? If I had just focused on gaining something instead of focusing on the struggle and focusing on the resistance, then it would have made the process a lot easier. And for for me and what I've noticed with a lot of people is they focus on what they have to give up. And when you focus on what you have to give up, you create resistance and you create the struggle. So you're creating your own struggle. If you want to just make things easier on yourself, think about this concept here. If you get into a boat and the rapids get rough, the tendency for most of us is to go against the current because we want to try to gain control. But what if you went with the current? What if you just got in the boat, you put your paddle in the boat, and you said, you know, whatever comes, let it come, and you go with the current? And you'll find out that it works out much easier for you that way. So um, I hope you learned something from this principle. Give up something to gain something, you know, and don't create struggle. We create our own struggles in our minds all the time when things can be a lot easier. So hope you learned something. This is Darren McDuffie, a.k.a. The Fat Man, assisting you in becoming perfectly healthy and toned. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.